Hey, welcome to Optimize Your Body with Martin Silva, where we talk raw, uncut facts to truly help you optimize your body. Hello, my lovely listeners. Firstly, I wanted to apologize. I've just spent the last 45 minutes scrambling around looking for my adapter for my headset. So I'm now talking into the laptop. I hope it sounds okay. I'm trying not to move in this squeaky chair. I'm just trying to sit perfectly still still here, and it's quite challenging because I'm not used to sitting still, and I can't literally move a muscle now without this chair squeaking. Anyways, today's episode is going to be about the best foods to eat prior to sex, prior to sexy time. Okay, so I put a little vote. I thought I'd fancy doing something different. I'm trying to keep this podcast entertaining, you know. I don't want it to be too boring. In. That's the last thing I want. I mean, I love I love talking about health and fitness and getting in shape and whatnot. But it's all about balance. You know, I enjoy myself. I do go out occasionally on the weekends. I do do the stuff normal humans do, you know? Eat shitty food here and there, drink alcohol and all the rest of it. I'm not gonna go into the rest of it. <laughs> nah. Um so yeah, I just wanted to try and make it a bit more relatable. So I thought, right, I'll put a little poll up on Instagram so everyone can vote. And I, vote, I put up like best sex foods, best pre-sex foods, and the other one was uh, feel good, look good, and 67% of people voted for pre-sex foods. So here we are. I'm going to talk about the best foods and my experience um, because I experiment in lots of different ways when it comes to health. And by the way, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to insinuate that I am a sexual god although I am. No, I'm not trying to insinuate that I am some sort of fuck machine. <laughs> Sorry about that, but um, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to imply that. I'm just telling you, based on my experience, it does make a big difference what you put into your body when it comes to, uh, obviously, it is pretty much everything when it comes to your hormone regulation and whatnot. What you're eating is pretty much everything. You know, what you're putting into your gut is vital because the gut is linked directly to the hormones. The hormones are linked directly to the gut. So, first of all, I'm going to get straight cut straight to the chase, right? I'm going to I'm going to tell you. Um, and an, another thing I wanted to say as well is, um, I bet there's a lot of guys out there listening, thinking, "I don't need no help with my sexual performance." Come on, get out of here! I am. There's no problems whatsoever with my sex drive, and there might not be, but. There's no problems with my sex drive either. But if you want to take it to another level, I'll tell you what, food makes a massive difference. Now, I'm always listening to podcasts. Ben Greenfield's a really good podcast, right? And I was listening to this one about the best foods for sex before. And I thought I'd try this concoction and by God, does it work? Okay? And I hope to God my mum's not listening to this episode because it's going to be quite embarrassing. So mum, please tune out now because... uh, it might get a little bit too crude for your ears, to be honest. Um, anyway, people, so there's lots of different foods, right, which can boost your um, blood flow. Because essentially, for both men and women, blood flow is essential. Uninterrupted blood flow and um, maximum pump, if you like, in the right areas, if you see what I mean, is pretty much fundamental when it comes to, uh, you know, Nookie, I don't know what else, what other words to use it. This is getting I'm going quite red here talking about this. Nah, um, but yeah, there's lots of different foods. For example, I'll, I'll just go through the top like af- aphrodisiac foods, right? And my experience. So meats, especially red meat, right? Beef, chicken, pork. They contain like carnitine and L-arginine, and also zinc. Now zinc is the game changer there. But vegetarians, they can opt for you know whole grains, nuts, and dairy products, um, which which are going to have I believe a certain amount of zinc and, and some of the nutrients I mentioned earlier. So vegetarians can still take those options. But I'll just run for a few more. Oysters as well. That's up there at the top in terms of uh, aphrodisiac. Most people know that anyway. Anyway, guys and girls, shellfish and, and you need to get these foods in once a week, people. I always try and make an effort. I don't I don't always um, capitalize, but shellfish, you know, oysters, those kind of things. I can't think <laughs> I've had a brain block. You know, clams, scallops, those kind of things. Um, really, really, really nutritious. Like that and animal offal, like chicken liver, lamb livers, you know, animal organs. Um, if you can get them in once or twice a week, either or, so nutritious to the point where um, they say veg- if, if a vegan was to eat just shellfish or um, 
animal offal once or twice a week, they would actually get more nutrients in than someone on a paleo diet. So someone then is, someone that's eating purely meat and vegetables, right? You know, like the paleo diet, kind of like similar to the way I eat uh, lots of meat, sorry, a, a sufficient amount of meat, lots of vegetables. They would not get as much nutrients in as a vegan who just ate shellfish um, and animal offal once or twice a week. That's how jam-packed full of nutrients shellfish and animal offal is. Anyways, um, they, 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 especially oysters, clams, and scallops, they contain, they contain uh, certain compounds that raise testosterone and estrogen levels. So a massive boost in hormone production. And then they're also, like I said, packed full of nutrients, an excellent source of uh, zinc, which aids blood flow to uh, you know to the sexual organs, and that's in both genders as well, right? Um, if you don't, if you're not into like that kind of food, mollusks, then lobster. If you if you're absolutely wedged and you got loads of money, nah, um, lobster or crab instead as well. So they're still loaded full of zinc. As I said, zinc is the game changer. Also, foods like salmon, um, nuts and seeds. Like I said, for vegetarians, but even for you know non vegans and vegetarians, I'm going to tell you my concoction anyway. Don't worry, I'll get to that. Um, which does contain certain kinds of seeds and stuff. But anyway, um, walnuts, again, zinc-containing foods. And as I mentioned, the compounds earlier, the amino acids, L-arginine, to get the blood flowing. So L-arginine um, really vasodilates the blood vessels, as far as I'm aware. So it's going to really aid um, optimal blood flow. So nuts and seeds like walnuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, pecans, hazelnuts, peanuts, um, or a good source of omega-3 as well. By the way, folks, these kind of foods you might want to make note of because they're just extremely healthy foods you should be including in your diet anyway. Apples, uh, garlic as well. Now, folks, I'm going off a bit here, right, because I, I'm relating it to health, but garlic is, is, is something that I actually had last night because I've had a little tiny bit of a cold this week and I've been feeling a bit run down. Now, they've done studies with garlic, folks, right, and the only thing is my breath still fucking stinks now right? <laughs> That's the only issue because um, if you eat raw garlic, okay, so I ate, I just I just munched two raw garlic cloves yesterday and I put some more in into my meals. Luckily, I wasn't going out anywhere. So uh, my breath was lively, absolutely lively this morning when I woke up. I could taste it. It was like, oh, but anyways, garlic, um, the studies they've done, right? Um, in terms of getting a cold and antibacterial, antiviral, it's literally a superfood. It's the best food. Um, it contains a compound called allicin, I believe, which is just, as I say, it is an excellent, excellent compound for battling um, bacteria and stuff. So what they've done, the studies have done have proven that people with colds who eat raw garlic, okay, whilst they're ill, it actually shortens the amount of time they have this cold from from the average of six days down to 1.5 days. So I always say to my clients, when they're ill and stuff and they get run down, munch on some raw garlic cloves. And I'll tell you what, it does something. I've had good feedback from clients saying, wow, it seemed to clear up much quicker than usual. Um, the best way to do it, I think, is get like a few raw garlic cloves, chop them up, leave them for about five minutes. Um, and then when you eat them, they'll have the highest amount of that compound I was talking about um, actually available. Uh, but also for, apparently, I didn't realize that, for uh, for sex as well. But that doesn't really work, does it? Anyway, you know, like, I'm just going to have some raw garlic before I have sex. No, nah, that's not going to work. That's going to scare the poor buggers away. So just maybe ignore that one for sex and use that one for, uh, use that one for all-round health. And then, folks, red wine. Now, we all know alcohol within itself. I mean, come on, you're much more relaxed and whatnot anyway if you consume alcohol pre-sex. But red wine, I don't want to go too much into the health benefits because I'm a massive believer in if you can get organic red wine. Because what you've got to bear in mind, folks, is when you, when you get wine, the, 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 it's one of the worst kind of, um, I don't know, liquids you can put into your body or substances you can put into your body in terms of the preservatives and all the chemicals added during the harvesting process of the grapes and stuff and the actual production process. So if you can get organic, then that's better. And I found this beautiful red um, organic wine, right? I just paused it to go and grab it out of the cupboard for you. Uh, here in Australia, it's called Yalumba, okay? And it's an organic Shiraz. It's beautiful and it's organic. But anyway, um, it's been proven a glass of red wine may help get the ladies in the mood, right? Now, guys, you all know what I mean, you know, get them drunk, seal the deal kind of thing. <laughs> 
Um, sorry, I'm, I'm terrible. I sound like such a narcissist. I'm not. I'm just trying to have fun with it. Well, I am. I am a narcissist, but not like top level. Anyways, um, two glasses of red wine a day has been proven to increase sexual desire and lubrication in women. But the true diamond here, folks, is uh, red wine is packed full of nitrates. So um, the blood flow, again, vasodilating the blood vessels and getting a pump, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, so red wine obviously goes without saying alcohol. But if you're going to drink alcohol um, before a sexual encounter, get the red wine on board, folks. It's the one. Don't get too sloppy with it. Come on, one or two glasses, that'll do the trick. You don't need a whole bottle. Anyways, I'm going to get to my concoction. I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent again there, but I just wanted to load you full of the kind of foods which have been proven scientifically. So, my concoction. Now, I listened to a podcast, Ben Greenfield's podcast, before I had a sexual encounter before. Um, about a year or so ago. And I thought I'd give this a go, right? And, um, Basically, the combination of it now, meat and eggs and stuff, as I said, I, I've heard like steak and eggs is one of the best things you can have. But I don't know about you folks, like eating a full blown meal before you get, you know, you're getting jiggy with it. I'm in a bit of a food coma, you know, if I have a big old steak and eggs and whatnot. I don't know, it's not really, I don't feel light as such, you know what I mean? I've got to stop saying, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but, um, oh man. Every time I have a coffee, I just bang on about nonsense. Let's cut to the chase, Silver. Anyways, my concoction is these foods. Dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds, beets, any kind of beets. You can use, like, um, leaves, right? So, um, you know, beet leaves. Um, but you just have beetroot. Just have beetroot instead because that's just straight um, nitrates and all the, sh- all the shit you need. Watermelon as well. Because watermelon basically contain all these different vital nutrients, right? And they relax the blood, it actually relaxes the blood vessels. Apparently, it's in a manner similar to, you know, the famous male drive enhancer, Viagra, apparently. So, watermelon is part of my concoction, okay? So, um, it's loaded full of water as well. So, you bump your hydration up at the same time. So, um, that's another one. Pine nuts as well. I think pine nuts uh, are to do with the blood flow again as well. I think it might be nitrate loaded. I'm not 100% sure. And then if you really want to, if you really want to take it to another level, red wine. And if you want, guys, if you want an absolute throb on, <laughs> this is terrible. Mum, please tune out. Um, if you want an absolute throb on, then obviously you can throw some Viagra in the mix with red wine um, on top of that. But to be honest, Without those two components, just a little, just I had a bowl of, I think I had about like three pieces of dark chocolate, so about 30 grams of dark chocolate. Write this down, guys and girls. Um, 30 grams of dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds, beetroots. I just chopped up like one or two beetroots, I think it was. Uh, watermelon, a few big chunks of watermelon, and then pine nuts in a bowl. Uh, I think one time I had two glasses of red wine as well, and I'm not just saying it. I mean, I have no issues for the most part um, when it comes to sexual desire. However, in terms of your genital genital, genital area, you get one hell of a pump, okay? So it's actually bigger down there. Now, try it out, lads, because of the vasodilation of the blood vessels and whatnot. It's like, for example, if you're going to go train and you want to get the ultimate pump, do you know the best thing you can take is Viagra. Now, I've never tried that personally. I've never taken Viagra and trained, but it is the ultimate vasodilator, and obviously it relaxes the blood vessels and improves blood flow like no other. So if you want to get a major pump, forget about all these shitty pre-workouts and whatnot. Just pop half Viagra. Um... And, get, and go and train and watch the pump you get. So, um, so yeah, that's my concoction. In a bowl, chuck it in there, dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds, beetroots, watermelon, and pine nuts. Boom. It's only quite light as well, NC. Um, and as I say, if you want to take it to another level, have a glass to a red wine. And if you want to literally, if you want to be like the number one performer on the planet and just really go to town on this individual, then, um, <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. Then pop a Viagra on top of that and uh, watch out. But the same goes for ladies as well. I mean, um, to be fair, I mean, you don't really have to do much, do you? Like, it's mainly the guys you've got to get a hard on and stuff, right? So, 
I mean, you haven't really got to worry too much. <laughs> I'm joking. That's a joke. That was really sexist. I'm only messing around. Um, but for women as well, it's, it, it is to do with the blood flow and whatnot. So um, those kind of foods should, you know, give you more of a thing down there. But I think this is predominantly for guys in terms of uh, just getting maximum pump in the right areas. But above all, people, right, before this is the stuff, I maybe I should have mentioned this before I went into all that mumbo jumbo, um, is, you know, if nothing, like, to be honest with me, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like, oh, yeah, you know, Mr. Mr. Macho, but I have a decent sex drive, right? However, nothing will kill my sex drive and libido more than stress, Okay. So it does not matter. For example, um, a guy, I listened to the Mind Pump podcast, my favorite podcast, guys. You should go and check that out. They inspired me to get this going. Mind Pump Media, talking about a pump. Um, but the guy on there, one of the guys, Adam, he takes testosterone because he's got um, issues with his testosterone levels. I won't go into it too much. So he takes steroids, essentially, uh, just to keep his testosterone levels at a decent level. And he says no matter, and he's taken lots of testosterone um, for competitions and whatnot. And he says, doesn't matter how much of that he takes, okay, testosterone, he still won't get a hard on if he's stressed. So stress trumps everything, folks. If your stress levels are too high, your cortisol levels are through the roof and whatnot, and you haven't got a decent amount of serotonin levels, um, which are going to be lifestyle inflicted, basically, um, the life, your lifestyle and whatever's going on in your life is going to influence that directly, then forget about the sex drive because that is what's going to, in my experience, and, and just the science tells you that if you're stressed out for whatever reason mentally, then um, you're not going to be at your best. So nothing kills my libido uh, at all, actually. Nothing does apart from stress, um, you know. Performance anxiety, that's another one. Um, you know, I'm just going to put it out there, folks. I'm human. I don't care what people think. Um, humility, the way I look at it is humility prevents humiliation, right? There's too many fake people out there um, who are driven by ego and lie about things. Like, um, oh, yeah, I've never, I've never once uh, had any issues in the bedroom. And I have never once had any problems. And I am a top performer 100% of the time. Yeah, of course you are, buddy. Um, sorry about that, but um, no performance anxiety is very common now. What's what's really really fascinating now? Um, I'm going off on one a bit here. I'll do another episode on this. It's quite. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Um, um, another thing is um, in terms of what they're finding now is an epidemic now with guys. Another epidemic, young guys who can't get hard ons because they're exposed to so much now on a digital level with porn. Um, and let's think about it now. If I were, you know, what I thought yesterday, and actually I, I took some of this off of Mind Pump podcast as well, is when I was, what am I now? I'm 30 years old. When I was like 17, there was no Instagram, right? So nowadays, for example, I'll go onto my Instagram. I don't follow as many of these women now, these these model women, because it just dis- distracts me. Um, but about a year or so ago, I would turn, I would go onto my Instagram feed, and all I would see is pictures of booties, asses, and thongs popping up on my feed nonstop, scrolling through. Um, and I just thought to myself, like, yesterday, if I was, like, say, 16, 17, and I was, you know, exposed to that, you know, I, all I would be doing all day long is just bloody scrolling through these pictures, watching videos. I mean, porn is another level altogether. And that's that's what is causing this problem now is because guys are watching so much porn that when it comes down to the actual uh, sexual interaction with someone – they are expecting all this crazy fantasy, all these nutty fantasies that they're watching on pornos, um, which isn't real. It's all fake. And then obviously when that doesn't unfold, they can't get a hard on. Uh, and also performance anxiety as well, because, um, you know, I don't know whether maybe that relates to us comparing to people more, comparing ourselves to people more on social media. And there's going to be other aspects as well in there. You know, you, you want to perform at your best and it becomes, you become anxious and stressed and then um, don't get it up or whatever. So these things are actually, the stats are showing now that actually there's more and more young guys now having issues with um, with uh, their sex drive. Well, not, not so much the sex drive, but actually performing in the bedroom. And all of that comes down to what they're exposed to nowadays. So, yeah, that's an interesting fact, folks. I thought I'd put that one out there. Um, but, yeah, stress. Manage your stress. Um, my top tips for that, guys and girls, is um, use meditation. I use that as a tool more than anything now. I don't do it religiously. I used to, I was doing it at one point every single day, day in, day out. For me, it works better if I just use it as a tool. So, um, a really good app I would recommend is Headspace. Okay. Um, you need to train, you know, just like you train your muscles, folks, and train your body, you have to take even more care with your mind. You have to train your mind. Now, it's been proven that meditation switches on certain parts of the gray matter in your brain, which will 
which does reduce cortisol levels, your stress levels, and increase serotonin levels. It's just proven that over time, if you practice meditation, um, it is going to train your brain and exercise your brain in a way which is favorable uh, for longevity, health, and uh, your stress levels. So that is something you should definitely look into. Also, gratitude, folks, is something I'm going to really take up a level now. Uh, there's a book I've just started reading, reading called uh, 59 Seconds by, uh, what's the name of the guy? Something Wiseman. Is it, It's not Richard Wiseman. It is oh, something Wiseman. Anyway, gratitude has made me realize, how, I mean, I kind of always do 10, I'll always go through 10 things a day. Um, I'll always do 10 things that I'm grateful for. So I'll run through that just as I'm walking to work. I'll do maybe five in the morning, five in the night. That could be anything, folks. So um, showing gratitude and just appreciating what you've got because um, 50, but I, I didn't realize, I read this in this book. I thought it was about 40%, but 50% of our happiness, unfortunately, folks, is what we are born with. It is ingrained into our genetics. So your genetic makeup is going to basically determine around about 50% of your overall happiness. However, 40% of your happiness is is going to be determined by your day-to-day behaviors and your education and whatnot. Um, and what and, and basically what you sorry not your education your day to day behaviors and what you actually think of others um, and how you value other people and whatnot is going to be the other forty percent. So essentially, giving, showing gratitude, all those kind of things come into that category. And then only ten percent, folks, ten percent comes down to money and financial and education and your your status, if you like, and um, and whatnot. So only ten percent of that overall happiness comes from what you have achieved essentially and what you, you know, education, finances, properties, whatever. So it just goes to show folks that you really do have to uh, train your mind uh, in order to keep your, keep yourself, you know, healthy mentally. Anyway, went off on a tangent a bit there. So just to wrap this up, the bottom line is um, I've given you heaps and heaps of different foods, um, which are good for your health anyway, but you might as well try it in there before you have before you have sexy time next. Have that little cocktail: dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds, beets, watermelon, pine nuts, and if you want to really take it up a gear, glass or two of red wine and a Viagra. <laughs> that's another that's another level. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend taking Viagra regular because just like anything you put into your body, your body will become efficient at, uh, um, at actually utilizing it and then you will not be able to perform as well without using it. So don't get into a habit of using that. But if you really want to uh, make a good impression, then why not add it in there? Anyways, folks, I hope that helped and I hope that was um, that was handy for you. And I think I've got to stop having a coffee directly before doing the podcast because I am very sensitive to it and I chat a lot of shit. So thank you for tuning in, people, and I will see you next week. Have a cracking day, and please, 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 I'm on my, literally on my knees begging you for this now. If you can give me a five-star rating and write me a nice review on iTunes, I will send you out my ebook for free, my recipe ebook. okay? So please, if you can do that, and then just drop me a direct message on Instagram, now, go, if you're not on my Instagram, go and follow me anyway, because that's where I do all my stuff, at Martin Silva Fitness, okay? Silva, S-I-L-V-A, Martin Silva Fitness. Go follow me on there. Give me a rating review. Once you've done that, send me a DM, send me a direct message, say I've done the review, and boom, I'll send you out the ebook. Okay, thanks for tuning in, folks. Peace.